Welcome, everybody, and thank you for coming back uh, to New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church for worship today. And we're back in, and hey, Hello, we got here. Richard next to me again, and uh, we got the whole gang back here again. So uh, this thing's lessening a little bit, uh, COVID, and uh, so we are back together again. We're not sitting in our homes and <laughs> recording. It's good to have everybody back inside and together um, and we're just full of joy. I hope you are too. So at this time, I want to invite you to get a candle ready, uh, light that candle, and also grab your Bibles. But today is Transfiguration of Our Lord Sunday. And uh, this is where our Lord transfigured in front of the disciples, and that means that the outward appearance of Jesus changed. That's transfiguring. If you're thinking of transformers, that's the inside that changes on the outside. But we're talking about the outside changing. So uh, I know you all love transformers, but uh, this is transfiguration. And I promise you, you'll be absolutely glowing afterwards. So please join us as we... Uh, Begin our bell choir prelude here today, and uh, we have a special treat that Barbara Eisenhardt and uh, and our bell choir is going with Nick Trowbridge on a viola. So thank you. Choir, that was special. Well, the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Amen. Amen. Well, we surrender to a lot of things. We're talking about this is also Valentine's Day. I hope you're not surrendering your love. And uh, Richard, please lead us in surrender. Giving you my heart and all that is with. 
Thank you, Richard. That was great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God speaks to us in scripture, reading, preaching, and song. Please get your Bibles out, turn to 2 Kings, that's it in front of your Bibles, and turn to chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and follow along with Scott Geyser. The first reading is from the second chapter of 2 Kings, verses 1 to 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. 
as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into pieces. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Scott. Now their favorite time, and you haven't been around it lately, Richard, but we still do it. It is we children's message children's day. Yeah. Yeah. So all the kids, come on up, and adults, get out there to your screens, and uh, and uh, let's uh, start. And we have a special guest today. We have Donna Kays, and she's going to deliver our message to you. So get ready. Good morning, boys and girls. Hello, everyone. So good to have you with us for worship today. Today is a special Sunday. What day is it today? Yes, it's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you. It's also a special day in our church year. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. I know transfiguration is a really big word. So what does it mean? Transfiguration means to change. Not just a little change, but a really big change. Kind of like when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. That would be a big change. It's a change that is glorifying. It's magnificent. And there was the transfiguration of Jesus. Let me help you understand. So, I have this plain, ordinary envelope. Nothing really special about it, although it is a nice color. I love the color red. Well, if I take this Valentine card and it has a message, Valentine, you're the best for real. God loves you and so do I. And I mail this Valentine card to a friend. I write their name on it, put a stamp on it, and I mail it. Well, I certainly hope that when they get it, they're gonna feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Okay, and it would be kind of like a little spiritual change. Yeah, and so a plain ordinary envelope can become something really special when we put that message of love inside. Well, that's kind of what happened with Jesus except on a much, much bigger scale, okay? The transfiguration of Jesus was when God came to him and Peter, James, and John, they were up high on a mountain, and Jesus transfigured. He became bright, light, so white. And at that point, God gave us the message, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. At that point, we knew Jesus is the son of God. How magnificent is that? Before this happened, hmm, there were some people that weren't so sure. Peter, James, and John, they might have been staggering a little bit in their faith. But at that moment, they knew. They knew Jesus was sent here for us, for every one of us. God's love is so great that God gave us Jesus. Yeah, what a message that is for us today. So, spreading God's love to others, like with this Valentine's Day card. Yeah, that's something we can do. 
but not just on Valentine's Day, every day of the year, we can spread God's love because love is what really makes a change. Love changes people's hearts. Love is what God gave to us when we were baptized. God said, you are my beloved. You are a child of God. So I think we know what we need to do, not just today, but every day. Let's spread God's love. Let us pray. Dear God, we want you to open our hearts so that we could share our love with everyone every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great day, everyone, and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, Donna. Appreciate that. That was powerful. Turn your Bibles up to 2 uh, Corinthians, and that's in the back of your Bibles, and go to the uh, chapter 4, and we'll be following Scott Geyser with verses 3 to 6. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians, verses 3 to 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Scott. And get out your hymnals if you have the hymnals. We've been announcing for the last several weeks, if you want to sign out a hymnal, you can gladly come and call up the office and we'll have one ready for you. You can sign it out and or turn to your sheet music. And if you haven't done it yet, you can go to newhandoverlutheran.org and get our sheet music for all our music here and sing along. But turn to, in your hymnals, number 661 or get your sheet music out for I Love to Tell the Story.
certainly do like to tell a story, and I'm about to tell a story now, but first uh, get those Bibles back out, and let's go to Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, 2 to 9. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, so as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Yeah. That's why I really like to tell the story. I love to tell the story, and I sure love to tell the story on this transfiguration. And so much is happening on this mountaintop that normally I give context of what went on. Like normally when the gospel starts out with six days later, you immediately want to know, well, after what? But here, you know, we got Moses, we got Elijah, we got God (laughs) and Jesus and three disciples. So you don't need any context. It's all here. This story is right here. And I thought about this and about God telling us about beloved, the beloved. So listen to them. Listen to him, Jesus Christ. But also, it is Valentine's Day, is it not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're wearing your red. I, I thank you. I put my old-fashioned blue back on. I did have red on, and I switched. I couldn't make an idea. And if I would have remembered that it was Val, <laughs> <laughs> we could have been coordinated. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, so it's easy to talk about Valentine's Day without, and and that's really an easy softball for a sermon and so forth. But you know. How do you tie it in with, you can't mistake in just the brilliance, and no pun intended, of transfiguration of this whole part. And I think it's, it's um, we talk about the beloved, and I think about listening. Because with every story we have, there's a speaker, and then there is the listener. And you, you find out right away that, you know, you that Jesus is speaking, God is speaking, no one's speaking. But in that middle of time, when the, the disciples are just listening, they're terrified because maybe they can't hear what's going on. But all they know is that Moses, Elijah, and God, and Jesus are there. <laughs> and they're in their presence. Listening to your beloved. Um, very early on, in our marriage, uh, Marsha and I, um, and she's over here today, and so I forgot to tell her about this part. But anyway, (laughs) so we'll find out if she does a renew her vows with me later. So we'll find out if she's happy or not from this. But it's a good story. So we, uh, Marsha rescued uh, this little tiny yellow fur ball named Cody from, uh, we shut down an office in our organization in Raleigh. And so Marsha brings back this little tiny fur ball named Cody. And Cody soon, this tiny fur ball that was only supposed to be 30 pounds, the vet said, it will grow to be about 30 pounds. So 115 pounds later, <laughs> Cody was this bumbling big, just, uh, it, it was a 
best friend, but he would just eat your walls and do everything that little yellow labs do. And so Cody became a really uh, great friend. And then also is that we moved into my, when we first got married, we moved into my cabin up into the woods. And it was more or less a pretty much a, um, how you say, a bachelor's cabin. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there weren't amenities. We got uh, one of the first things that we did, uh, uh, Marsha redecorated because she put a, a refrigerator in our kitchen. <laughs> Essentials. Who would have thunk, yeah. you know? Hey, it had a, you know, it had a spring house to it. Who needs a refrigerator? But I used to travel quite a bit. So I traveled about two to 220 days a year, which was quite a bit back then. But that was what my job demanded me to do. And then Cody became very quickly Marsha's confidant and her best friend, and they were together all the time. At a very early age, Cody developed uh, problems. In fact, it was one of our last major snows we had here in the Gilbertsville area, and where we had that one in the 90s that was like three foot of some snow, and and so um, Cody had a hard time and strained his lack legs, and it soon turned into arthritis, and uh, Cody, um, became limp after a while and he was having a lot of pain in his side. So I was traveling one day and I was very far away and and, uh, Marsha said I I took Cody for an x-ray. Now, you know, I'm a Pennsylvania Dutchman and uh, I grew up with farmer families and uh, our dogs didn't get x-rays, let alone, I don't know how often I even went to the vet, you know. (laughs) They got fed table scraps and, you know, and, uh, you know, they were hunting dogs, you know, and they were dogs, they were family pets, but also, uh, you know, they were just, uh, uh, you know, vets and x-rays would have never been discussed. And then uh, the next, I'm on the phone and I'm like, oh, an x-ray. And then she goes, then they said to go get an MRI. And I'm like, an MRI? (laughs) How much did that cost? And then she just, she just ignoring me. And I'm not listening. You know, this is listening to the beloved. I'm not listening. And then she gets to the point where, and then they're going to do surgery. I'm like, surgery? And then I'm like, how much does that cost? You know, and, and then she just keeps talking, just ignores me because she knows that. And she goes, they're going to put three titanium discs in his back. I'm like, titanium? <laughs> oh... So the listening part comes in that when Marcia said, look, he's my friend. In fact, he's my best friend. He's here more with me than you are. (laughs) And she said, and uh, all of a sudden I start hearing God's word and sense and, you know, what it means, what you do for a friend and how you live off the mountaintop and how you take care of one another. So, so I finally started listening, and, and of course, Cody turns out fantastic. He lives to be the age of 16. He's just, you know, just a lot of fun and uh, still bumbling, still eating light bulbs and eating the side out of our walls and everything else. But, uh, you know, that's what you do when you come down the mountaintop. And we have a lot of experiences. You see, that was real soon after we got married, you know, and, and we had our honeymoon and, 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 you know, you all know that feeling that, or maybe it was another experience that you had, or maybe you're coming out of recovery, you know, those first months or so after when you're in recovery and you're feeling better than you ever had before. And that mountaintop kind of feeling, but like the disciples, you had to come down. So what do you do? What do you do when you leave the mountaintop? How do you live? And I think it's the first key. It's the last verse that gives us to it. But it says that when they're coming down the mountaintop, they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. And I think Jesus' story of rising from the dead and what we are to do and how we have Jesus in us through our baptized and what it means to live a baptized life is how we live when we're coming down the baptized life. Another story, and I don't like to tend to pile stories on tons of stories, but this happened today and it was so powerful. 
this truly means what it means to live coming down from the mountaintop and when we're at the bottom and we no longer have that pink cloud, we no longer have that transfigure, we no longer have that glowing feeling of that honeymoon type feeling. Someone called today, called my wife up and to when we're delivering meals and called and said, I can't deliver a meal. Marcia said, okay, and so she called another person to deliver the meal, and you'll know her, Debbie, we call her Debbie Little Horses, and it's Debbie that you met last Sunday if you watched our worship service, and she gave her testimony about how the peer support ministry meant so much to her during the time of this coronavirus, and, and how she is living her life, and so much fuller. Well, Debbie, Debbie agreed to drive, but she told Marcia, she said, uh, look, I, I can drive, but I can't go very far because I have a big snowplow on her truck. And Debbie loves her snowplow. Uh, you know, she asked me, like, when she came here at a Christmas Eve with a with the little horses, and I was talking about the parking lot and maybe snow, and she goes, I got that covered, Pastor. I just love plowing people out. I don't, and I said, okay. And so she looks for snow. This is a person that loves it because when she grew up, it's what she remembers of being the time with her father. The love that she has with her father as her father would take her out. Take her out and do snow plowing there with his little girl on the seat next to him. She would look up to him and those were mountaintop moments. She was glowing. She was transfigured when she could be with her father. Be alone with him, serving and helping others. And as it turned out that Marcia said, okay, and so she rearranged the different deliveries for the drivers for our food ministry, and Marcia sent her to one of the families nearby. And they live far back in the woods like I did. I said that cabin, and they do too. Two ruts normally go through this mountain of trees, and then it makes a hard turn, and it's hard to get back to. And as she gets there, walking up there, is this frail man, this man just walking up there and struggling in his 80s, coming up to get his meals. See, it's so hard normally for anybody to get back into their home that's tucked away in a home because of the snow and that. And no one had plowed it since that last big snow. And they hadn't been out of their house other than to get the meals. So Debbie took it upon herself then immediately is to get in her, you know, get back into the truck. And she told the gentleman, get in, I'll drive you. We're gonna plow this. And she plowed the snow down there. And I can just imagine it might've been like with her dad, you know, sitting next to her again, that mountaintop moment. But there she is at the bottom of the mountain now. What do we do with our lives when we've been helped? when we've been saved. And she plowed out the difficult parts with the truck and she made them so that the people could get back out now and start living their life too. Get to the store, get their medicine, get the things they need to survive. And I think that story epitomizes how we should live but it also epitomizes how God is with us every moment. For if somebody didn't call to cancel the drive, if something came up that was that important in her life, then Marsha would not have had to, have to call Debbie and Debbie wouldn't have had this experience. But I'm sure as it turned out, Debbie's probably telling the story, I had a great day today. I was able to plow somebody out of snow. And this other guy is saying, hey, I had a great day today because somebody came and plowed my whole, my whole like, driveway and, and I'm, I'm able to get out again. Being beloved and listening to them is what God is calling us to do. And it's this last verse. I just talked about saving others. But it's this last verse that gives us hope that no matter where we're at, because we're not always on that mountaintop, are we? Can we be honest with each other? It doesn't last for long. No one has a honeymoon for the rest of their life. Marsha will probably come up here soon and tell you that's true. <laughs> but it's that hope 
and that joy that we have in because the disciples were questioning what this rising from the dead could mean and what it meant as a salvation for us all as baptized believers. And that is our hope and that is our joy. God loves us and God transfigures us with that glow and doing God's work with our hands. Richard? It is mighty to save.
Thank you, Richard. Now, if you haven't done it, I uh, encourage you, but you know, since we're live right now, but maybe go back and do it, but uh, please uh, follow along in our service. So we're gonna do a renewal vow service. So get your loved one close or the thing that you love in your mind and get those ones so we can do renewal of our love to one another. By your presence here on this day, those of you who are assembled at this celebration, show your love and support for all who gather to renew their love for a gift God has given them. As we gather together apart for one another, you are encouraged to continue to share your words of support and encouragement and acts of kindness and genuine Christian love as if we were gathered in one assembly. In this letter to the church members at Colossus, the Apostle Paul defines the necessary elements of living together in Christian community to include compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, patience, forbearance, forgiveness, love, and peace. These elements are gifts given to us by Christ himself. It's what it means to live at the bottom of that mountaintop. Today, we pray that these gifts remain central to each of us as we continue to grow in Christian love with God, God's people, and with one another. Each of you, living in a promise of God, Will you again give yourself to the one you love in love and faithfulness? Will you continue to share your life with them in joy and in sorrow, in health and in sickness, for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse? And will you be faithful to them as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. Marsha, could you please come forward? I'd like to get my wife up here together and so we can do our vows together. Hi. Oh. Hi. Gracious God, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into the world to reveal your love to all people, enrich all with every good gift, that their life together in love may continue to show forth your love, and grant that at the last we may all celebrate with Christ the marriage feast that has no end. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let's go back to one part right before that. And I'll say, will all of you, by God's grace, uphold and care for each of us as we commit our love and our lives together? If so, answer, we will. We will. <laughs> now get your loved one close and let us do our vows together. Now I go first as normally during a marriage. To, yes. Yes, so anyway. <laughs> but... Uh, Please follow along and repeat and use your own name and your own loved one's name. But I, Scott, recommit my love to you, Marsha, as my loved one. Today and always, as long as I live, I will be with you in times of joy and suffering, wealth and poverty. I love you and honor you according to God's gracious will. I, Marsha. Recommit my love to you, Scott, as my loved one and friend, today and always, as long as I live. I will be with you in times of joy and suffering, wealth and poverty. I will love you and honor you according to God's gracious will. Oh, thank you. I hope this takes you to the mountaintop that I was talking about before. So allow me to bless. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us and to endure the cross for our sake, that we may have abundance of life. By the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to pour out the abundance of your blessing on all gathered here and doing their commitments here now. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let your love be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle upon their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them, so my God, so that their lives together may bear witness to your love. Bless them in your work, and in their companionship, in their sleeping, and in their waking, in their joys, and in their sorrows, in their life, and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, almighty, gracious God, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Well, I'm going to change things up here a little bit, and I'm going to go right to the peace so that everybody can share a sign of peace and love with one another. So peace be with you. It's with you. Share a sign of peace and love with one another. Peace, baby. Allow us to pray together as one assembly, in one union with Jesus Christ and with God. Almighty and gracious God, we pray for those mountaintop moments, dear Lord. We pray thankfulness for giving them to in the times that we're extremely in joy. We pray to be with you also, dear Lord, and be with us and bless us as when we're at the bottom of the mountain, dear Lord, when we're not so joyous, not so radiant in those times. Be with us also to be able to give grace, almighty and gracious God, that when others that we love and that we are near or the things that we love, when we're not at our best or they're not at our best, dear Lord, may we also give them grace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Almighty and gracious God, may we also treat with love the creation that you have given us, the universe, the cosmos, the land, the sea, the air all the animals that surround us, dear Lord, the trees, the plants. May we know that they are also part of creation, dear Lord. And for those things that are injured, may we have wisdom and discernment to restore. For those things that are gone, may we grieve them and look to save those that are diminishing. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we pray for those ministries out there that bring love and recovery to relationships. We pray for all the counselors and the guidance of people that are re helping restore relationships between two, dear Lord. May we pray for those that are restoring for families, dear Lord, and bringing them back together. May we learn 
that pathway to love our enemies and forgive and give grace to others. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, for those that during this coronavirus pandemic, dear Lord, we pray for those that are grieving their loss, their loss of sense of smell and touch, and dear Lord, and taste, and dear Lord, we pray that for those that are lost their breath, and dear Lord, the breathing, and all the other symptoms that may go with it, Almighty God, we pray for them in earnest. We pray for those that have lost and given their life, dear Lord, and their families that grieve for them. We pray, Almighty God, for the technicians, and for scientists, and for doctors, and nurses, and all caregivers. May you give them the wisdom and discernment to produce new treatments. May you give our manufacturers the knowledge, wherewithal, and the funding to be able to produce more vaccines. And may we continually seek this, dear Lord, in your name to help and love our neighbors and one another. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we pray for those that are sick and grieving and ill, dear Lord, within our assembly and also our family and friends. We take this time to either say their names aloud now unto you or keep silently in our heart. Kurt. Sue and Sue. Marsha. Kathy. Bertie, we pray for all these, dear Lord, and all those that you know that are unspoken. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, also for those that have gone before us, all the saints. We pray for Jack Wilson and his family, dear Lord, and their sorrow and grief. We continually pray for all those that we have lost this past year and our neighbors and our friends, and we just thank you for putting in our place the saints that have taught us how to live, how to dance, how to joy, and how to grieve once we're at the bottom of that mountain. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. but however, as you know, we don't do our offering right now. I just wanna thank you because you've been so good. We've been getting more and more offerings in and people are picking up on mailing them in. Also, you can drop them off in our fellowship hall door slot and uh, there's a container there. You push it through the little mail slot that's just opposite the golf course. And of course, you can go online and uh, sign up at our top at our webpage newhanoverlutheran.org and there's a giving section right at the top. You click on that, takes you a few minutes and you could be done for the rest of your life. You just figure out how much you want and boom, it'll do it. Or you can just do it one time. We thank you for everything. Thank you very much and uh, God. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth to nourish your whole creation. Turn your hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. God of abundance with his bread of life and his cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just go. God blesses us and sends us into the mission of the world. And speaking of mission, there's a few things I wanted to point out today. Um, specifically, uh, maybe even we'll have a special guest at the end of the announcement period. I don't see anybody raising their hands out there yet, but they may show up yet too. But anyway, uh, first of all, um, this today, if you're watching before noontime, <laughs> you're watching it, come by to church and get your ashes for Ash Wednesday. And uh, we have a very special service going on for Ash Wednesday. You'll really love it. We have uh, Richard and Sue Lowry, Richard Thomas, and with uh, Patricia Nice, and, and uh, we have a special liturgy and music and uh, event. It's gonna be um, a place where we remember our ashes. Remember, I told you last week, and when we receive our ashes on our forehead, it's in remembrance of the time when I baptized and put the mark of the cross on your forehead on the child's, and, and your pastor did it too, and it's a remembrance of that, and that's the significance of that on Ash Wednesday. From, from dust that we were born, and from that moment we were born to the time we're in a grave, we'll return to that dust. But God is with us each and every time, and we never taste the grave, for God gives us life to life. So celebrate with us on Ash Wednesday. Get your ashes on Sunday. We have a drive through going on. Our faith formation team will be there, and if you signed up, you will receive a Advent bag, our Lenten bag. We're done with Advent. We're going to get Lenten bags this year. <laughs> That's what we do before Easter, right? So um, we're going to get those Lenten bags, and they'll be handed out for the families and so forth. But you can just come through, and I'll be out there, and you can just say, Pastor, I didn't sign up for a bag. All we want are our ashes. And on there, it tells you about how to um, uh, make them into, so you can make the sign of the cross on your forehead, or sprinkle them as the Eastern Orthodox uh, tradition. So uh, please join us outside. And uh, I want to thank everyone. Everybody that this past week that bought our soup sales, uh, we made $900 there for the soup sale. So thank you for helping out the Picnic Grove. And uh, it looks like if we can get back out there again, we will have activities in the Picnic Grove. So thank you very much for supporting us there. So are there any other announcements? I have an announcement. I have an announcement. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you. I miss you all. I have a question for you. How many of you miss church meals? Me too. Well, I've got great news for you. The Swamp Picnic Committee is having a drive through spaghetti dinner. Yes, on Saturday, March 20th. Go ahead, get a pencil and write that down. Saturday, March 20th is the Swamp Picnic Spaghetti Dinner. And all you have to do is order your meals. Now, our spaghetti dinner is going to have a generous portion of spaghetti, delicious homemade spaghetti sauce, delicious homemade meatballs, and Chef Chris's home-baked bread, along with a tossed salad and pizzelles. All you have to do is go to the church's website and order the number of meals you would like. Each meal is $10. If you have any questions, you just have to call Susan at the church office. So, Saturday, March 20th is our spaghetti dinner. You will drive up to the kitchen window and we will hand your meals off to you. And we just ask that you order your meals by March 15th. We hope you come out and support the Swamp Picnic Committee and get a great church meal in the meantime. Thanks so much. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you, Sally. Uh, we will. 
we'll get out there and support. And don't forget to get your spaghetti dinners. Sign up soon. And last but not least, on February 28th at 11 a.m., and uh, you got a letter in the mail just recently, and you can look, and we're going to have our congregational meeting and our uh, vote on our annual reports. And uh, we'll also be um, um, voting and bringing in some new council members. So um, please join us, 11, 11 a.m. by Zoom, uh, and on February 28th. Thank you. Leading us today in love divine, all love excelling, you'll find it number 631, or turn to your sheet music. It'll be Carolyn Fleming and Patricia Neese. Blessed and holy Trinity makes you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Go get them. We'll see you on Ash Wednesday at 3 o'clock.
Thank you.